case for the rate on the uh, right side. I'll do a retrograde um, insertion and I would do this with a screw two, starting closer to where the fracture is. Um, I use the guide wire to get myself started, in this case, a 2.8 millimeter guide wire um, and allows me to direct and orient myself in the two planes to get um, where I want to be. So uh, once the wire is sort of in the orientation you want it, or if you need to make some micro adjustments, you can cannulate it with the five millimeter drill bit. Um, and this is where one of the, I think one of the ad potential advantages of luminos is if you're using a traditional screw technique and you use this technique with cannulation of the guide wire to reorient yourself, you are sort of carving out some of the remaining bone that um, in this space, which is already deficient in this uh, elderly population, and leaving a big, basically, tunnel and you're putting a solid metal screw in it, it's going to be floating around in there, and perhaps the stability it provides might not be as, as much, and perhaps it won't provide as much uh, pain relief. The advantage of the luminos is even if you're carving out a more of the bone when you use this technique to reorient the wire, the, the implant is going to fill the space to its maximum capacity. It's going to fill yeah. the space and occupy it. So I think that's one advantage of the use of this screw in, in, these, in this population where the bones are sort of hollow uh, tubes. Once you're satisfied with the orientation, you can tap the, the guide wire down the rest of the way. And then um, I leave the drill bit in place and remove the guide wire. So the thing for this, which I'll sort of reiterate later is, I use the 450 millimeter guide wire so that I can leave the drill in place and still have the ability to retrieve the, drive, the guide wire. And then I'll place the Illuminos flexible guide wire. And once that's in place, I can remove my drill bit and I can use the Illuminos flexible reamers if needed and followed by application of the sleeve and insertion of the implant, which looks like this when it's put in and not inflated. And then as you eject the monomer, it fills the space. Um, to occupy the, the, the gap in, in the interventionally part of the bone. For the other side where we had that small and displaced um, pubic root fracture, we went anagrade. Uh, again, a similar technique, orienting, getting started with the guide wire, adjusting our orientation with the drill bit and getting past the uh, hip joint down to the rami, which is really, really thin in this population. A lot of these patients are um, elderly females and um, they tend to have some very narrow rami at times. Again, I think this is another area where the application of the luminos is nice because trying to get a straight uh, screw uh, down um, this very small intermediate canal can be quite challenging. And the luminos, because it's flexible, will contour uh, more easily. And then uh, once you get the guide wire down, you can pass, pass the flexible reamer and proceed with placement of your implant and inflation. And you can see in the back, you know, for the sacrum, I don't use a mouse for the sacrum, I still use traditional uh, screw technique. So in the pelvis, my primary application for this is the anterior pelvic uh, ring. So these are the post-op films, and you can see how we've uh, basically filled the and spanned the fractures in the anterior part of the pelvic ring. And this is a 10-month follow-up, and you can see, certainly visible on the right side, there's been quite a nice uh, healing response uh, on that rami and uh, the implants have held up and um, we haven't had any, any breakages or anything. So again, just to reiterate a few tips on the technique. This is another example. We have a fracture at the anterior ring and we have a fracture in the posterior uh, pelvis. And again, we're going with this guide wire to gain orientation. And I used a 2.8 millimeter. So the 2.8 millimeter guide wire I prefer because the 3.0 one tends to get caught up sometimes in the drill bit, the candidate drill bit. So I prefer the 2.8. And again, the 450 is that I can still access and retrieve the wire whilst the drill bit's in place. And that makes the whole technique much easier because essentially once you have your guide wire in and your drill bit orienting it in the correct orientation, it's just a swap of the solid guide wire for the flexible one that the Illuminos um, set has. And then you can get the cases basically done. Over that flexible guide wire, you put your implant in and inflate it and basically wait for it to harden after you engage the light mechanism. And that's, that's the case. So they've now developed, I used to have to pull all these implants, uh, the 2.8 wire, 5450, the 5 drill bit from other sets, but now they've, um, they're launching um, a kit that has all these in it. So you don't need to retrieve any additional sets from other vendors to, to have this implant. Um, and this is the res clinical result in this, in this patient with this eight by 100 millimeter implant. You know, we've done about 15 of these that we have some follow-up on. Um, and, um, 
some of them are isolated, some of them are bilateral, some are in combination with sacral fractures. We haven't had any um, catastrophes. We haven't had any infections. We haven't had any, any breakage of implants. And we've had some patients expire, obviously, given this population, this at-risk population that sustains these injuries, but no uh, catastrophic complications with use of this implant uh, so far. 